Welcome friends, Shannon and Shay here, ready to talk about the Bhagavad Gita, going to chapter two. Please join us, grab your Gita, and let's go. What do you think, Shay? Yeah, let's get into it. If you haven't watched our previous episodes and you want to kind of follow along in order, uh, we will link our chapter one here. And also we have a reaction video that we did about the Gita all over and kind of in general. So, so yeah, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping in. We recently discovered the Bhagavad Gita. And I'll just say for myself, recently has only been a few weeks. Shay's had it for a year or so. Two years, yeah. So a couple of years, yeah. Mm -hmm. So part of what we're doing, if you haven't watched our previous episodes, um, check them out and um, see where we've gotten up to this point. But a lot of what we're doing is literally just reacting to the material in the Gita. Having not seen it before, having not read it before, some of it is just my reaction to Shay. So as you go along reading this beautiful divine song of the Gita, this is like, it's it's honestly blowing my mind. I'm obsessed with this thing. I literally have dreamed about it. I woke up seeing the words coming out of my mouth. So mm -hmm. it's like, I'm in dream world. I'm even going to it then. So like, um, we've already talked about sort of the introduction. So again, watch our other ones if you haven't seen that. And so now we really just want to go through chapter two. So let's go remind everybody where we're at sort of in the narrative of oh, what is happening. Yeah. So what's what, happening? what happened in that last um, bits of chapter one, Arjuna is in despair. He doesn't want to fight the other side who is his family in this big battle. And he's just... I mean, he drops his bow and arrow and he's like, what do I do next? He's at complete surrender to Krishna in general, because as Krishna is his charioteer and is watching this whole thing unfold. Um, but yeah, he's just in complete despair, which we kind of use the analogy of he's going through a dark night of the soul right now. He doesn't know what to do. And so that's where we leave him. And in chapter two, we get um, such a divine answer from Krishna that... It's so good. As you said, was unexpected if you were uh, used to reading like a Christianity book. I mean, really. Christianity. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unexpected because, first of all, the story is we've got Arjuna basically facing a, a war, a battle. Mm -hmm. It's his literal family members on the other side and the people he knows and loves. And he basically sees himself in, in the midst of about to enter this battle. And he goes to Krishna like, I can't do it. I, I'm just going to, what am I going to kill everyone I love? And like, what's my life going to be like afterwards? So this is really Krishna's answer. And he really starts by um, saying like, um, what are you doing? Like, why are you in this moment when you're faced with your toughest battle? Why are you sitting down in the bottom of your chariot and saying, woe is me? What's happening? Get up, get up and fight. And like, as we talked about in the last episode about how, the Gita being like an allegory for the battle of life, mm -hmm. the different battles of life that we encounter along the way and how many times we have been in the moment of giving up or just in that mindset of like, I can't do this. This is too much. No, thank you, universe. <laughs> no <laughs> more for me. I don't want to do this. I don't want to deal with this. <clears throat> That's kind of where Arjuna is at. And there's no more extreme um, analogy for attachment than a loved one. You know, I mean, it could be, it doesn't have to be a loved one that you're attached to. It can be any situation, person, place, thing that you're attached to. And right here we see Arjuna is attached to the people on the other side. And that's why he doesn't want to right. continue on with this battle, though he is this grand warrior who is known as this um, famous archer, you know, he, this should be. And as we hear, we'll hear Krishna say, we're going to go through these um, verses together, but... As we'll hear him say, this is your dharma. This is your purpose is to be a warrior. So rise up and, and complete your dharma. Yeah. If you could read chapter two, start at verse four, maybe like four through seven or eight. It, like basically we have two different versions. I have this Frank, Franklin Edgerton version. Yeah. The language is extremely kind of flowery. Um, yours is almost like the, the new standard of edition or something. Yeah, it's it, definitely a little easier language. So if you would read like four to eight. Then... Well, actually, I'm going to back up to two because this okay. is what Krishna says initially to Arjuna. Arjuna puts his bow and arrow down. He says he's not sure what to do. And this is Krishna's initial um, commentary back to him. This is chapter two, verse two. He says, this despair and weakness in a time of crisis are mean and unworthy of you, Arjuna. How have, you been, how have you fallen into a state so far from the path to liberation? 
It does not become you to yield to this weakness. Arise with a brave heart and destroy the enemy. And I remember you telling me when you first listened to this, like that was the answer that was the most unexpected because you expected him to say, you know, these are the people you love on the other side. You're right, Arjuna. You can't fight the people you love. And Krishna literally comes back right, right away. No remorse. No nothing. beating around the bush. I'm waiting for turning the other cheek, yeah. to be honest. Yep. And instead I got, get Arise. up and fight. What are you doing? Arise. Arise. Arise, he says, right? And if uh, this is an analogy for the battle in life, what a beautiful reminder to at those darkest points, you all, all you can do is get up and fight. You know, yeah. that's all you can do is move forward and get up and do the things that you know you need to do. Or else you're going to stay down at that bottom, that, that well of despair. Right. I wanted to back up a little bit and talk about Krishna for a second here because we talked last time about who is Krishna. And we're like, well... We know he's a somewhat minor character up to that point in the larger epic, but like that's not necessarily true. He yeah. isn't, he's known to be an enlightened being from when? Like, we don't know. Like, we got to dig into that. And honestly, that's even one of those places where we're not sure, as sure about. But um, we didn't, we don't mean to downplay Krishna's role up until this point. But there's no mistake that he's the charioteer. Yeah. And he's like driving and he's like in the position to be saying these things. He's there when Arjuna breaks down. Yeah. So there's no mistaking that. And this, of course, is this comes out of him. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna continue on. This is Arjuna speaking now, chapter two, verse four. How can I ever bring myself to fight against Bhishma and Drona, who are worthy of reverence? How can I, Krishna? Surely it would be better to spend my life begging than to kill these great and worthy souls. If I killed them, every pleasure I found would be tainted. I don't know which would be better, for us to conquer them or for them to conquer us. The sons of Jirashtara have confronted us, but why would we care to live if we killed them? I just want to ponder that for a second. Yeah. Because, I mean, it seems like... Makes sense to me. This seems, like, seems like... This seems like questions I would be asking. For you sure. know, why should I do this? These are the people that I love. I mean, I've, I've felt this way in life. Like, I'd, I would so much rather be doing this than that. And that's what he's saying. I'd rather be a beggar on the street than have to go into battle against these men. True. But, I mean, one thing we know about this battle is that he didn't actually start this battle. Yeah. He's actually just faced with it. Yeah. So... In oh, that, which is such a beautiful analogy in itself because how many, how often do things just in life flow to us? We don't ask for them, right? But they happen and you're faced with this and now what? Yeah, so he's faced with this thing <clears throat> and he's like, what do I do? Like, how do I handle this thing? It's better, it would be, and he like goes on to be like, it's better if I was dead, basically, yeah. um, before I had to handle this thing. But if this is all an allegory, okay, and... We're thinking about the people he loves as an allegory, as his attachment, perhaps. Then basically what he's saying is, I would rather die than let go of my attachments. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. like I'd rather give it up. I'm not letting go of my attachment because it's too much. It's too, like I, I need that. That's kind of what it seems like. He's like, I need that. And of course we know what Krishna is about to say, which is like, oh, you, know, <laughs> you know. And I mean, just think about it. Do you know some people who are so hard headed that, yeah, they will literally turn away from love, turn away from yeah. pleasure, turn away from joy for attachment to a certain item or a certain home or a certain place or a certain person. Yeah, true. Or, or like whatever it is that they've told themselves they have to have or have to be or can't be. Because I feel like sometimes our attachment is like, um, in the sense of like our limiting beliefs, we get attached to those. Yeah. Like I can't be that because I carry a certain wound and therefore I'm not. Which is whatever. like the path to become the blind king. Totally. You know, yeah. it's just like the path of being that exact person who's just blind to the reality of life compared to the illusions of life. For sure. Okay, so he's basically saying to Krishna, like, I can't let go of my attachments. And I, I don't know how to go on without my attachments. And, and it's important here, too. He says, I have fallen at your feet. Dear Krishna, give me yeah. instruction. What can overcome a sorrow that saps all my vitality, even power over men and gods, or the wealth of an empire seem empty to me? Yeah, right. And Sanjaya, who is the seer, who was um, transcribing this whole thing to the blind king, just um, explains that Arjuna lays down. He's sunk into, into deep despair. And now we hear Krishna's beautiful, lovely answer, which begins on uh, verse 11, chapter 2. 
Yeah. You speak sincerely, but your sorrow has no cause. The wise grieve neither for the living nor for the dead. There has never been a time when you and I and the kings gathered here have not existed, nor will there be a time when we will cease to exist. At the same, as the same person inhabits the body through childhood, youth, and old age, so too at the time of death he attains another body. The wise are not deluded by these changes. Which, okay, here's Krishna with reincarnation. Right? Just right. like saying reincarnation. Yep. It's He's a like, thing. literally, you can't die. Well, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, I, well, later Krishna explains how he remembers everything. He remembers every lifetime. Okay? He remembers all that. So we know we show up and we have crossed some type of veil of forgetfulness and we don't remember all of our lives. Yeah. So hence we get attached and we can't see above and see like, duh, you can't even die. Hello. That's pretty much what he's saying. He's like, you can't even die. Um, but we can't see that. And I do know that that's part of our human experience, not being able to see that. And part of our journey is to sort of unmask all that yeah. and, and be able to see our higher selves here. And that's kind of what ends up, I uh, mean, he, he says that basically. I mean, he, he goes on and on about it pretty much like, um, just, he says, as to the embodied soul in this body, come childhood, youth, old age. So the coming to another body, the wise man is not confused herein. So it's like the wise man knows that this is just the one experience I'm having. So I can't actually lose those people. I can't actually um, die. I can't actually um, cease existing. And if I know that, then it's easier for me to get up in battle. Yeah. Really, yeah. if I know I can't die, if I know I can't actually lose, it just it appears that way. So then I say again to myself, letting go of attachment does feel like a, a, a death in some ways, like grieving and it, not even just people, just things, just places, just who I am. Like I'll, I'll have a, a idea in my head, my, the image of who is Shannon. And sometimes something will happen that shakes me out of that. And it's like, I got to change my whole mindset. I got to let go of that attachment of who I thought I was mm -hmm. um, if if I want to move forward and expand my soul a little bit. So I got to be able to see it for what it really is. And I, I love how Krishna just basically starts to break it down to him. Like, wait a second. This isn't even real. Like in the sense, like, yes, it is. But like, it's not in the sense of like, you are eternal. Yeah. And I, I love that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Continue on to chapter verse or chapter 2 verse 14 when the senses contact sense objects which can we explain that a little bit yeah, so yeah, when your senses that. contact sense objects so your senses being your nose contacts a smell okay. or your ears contact a sound or your you know feeling contacts some type of surface that's okay. what he means there a person experiences cold or heat pleasure or pain these experiences are fleeting they come and go bear them patiently arjuna those who are unaffected by these changes, who are the same in pleasure and pain, are truly wise and fit for immortality. Assert your strength and realize this. I remember when I first read the Gita, and I literally have this um, highlighted here, that was one of my favorite phrases because I think that it sums up the path of yoga so well. Those who are unaffected by these changes, who are the same in pleasure and pain, are truly wise and fit for immortality. And can you imagine, moving through life, doesn't matter the situation or the sensation you are the same in pleasure and pain alike you are literally unmovable i love that well that's the goal yeah is t can we get to that yeah can we detach enough that we um are not moved and i mean to be to be honest what i one of the things i thought about at this part was I actually love pleasure and joy. Yeah. <laughs> like we yeah. all do, okay? Like we're all humans, right? Yeah. So that's almost a little bit of a det detachment thing. Like, yes, we can all let go of the pain and we can all like imagine like if we can rise above and all of that. But like, can we let go of the things that are joyful? Can we let go of it in the sense of, not that we can't have those joyful experiences still, but in the sense of like, it doesn't matter. My overall mood or slash happiness doesn't, is not dependent on that. It makes me think of um, like having a delicious leftover meal in the fridge and you come home and it's eaten and like, how are you going to respond to that? Yeah, that thing was supposed okay. to bring me pleasure. I had my mind set on that all day, you know, and to Who stay, that? <laughs> exactly. That's very relevant probably here as humans. So to be able to keep your For mind sure. even and not be like, 
who took my leftovers? Seriously, my son ate my tofu. And I was like, what? Like, I literally was looking forward to that. Yeah. So, for sure, for sure. Okay, we continue? Yeah. This is still Krishna speaking, verse 16. The impermanent has no reality. Reality lies in the eternal. So, I, I mean, I just want to soak that in for a second. I almost want to read it again. The impermanent has no reality. Reality lies in the eternal. So, I mean, he's right there. If our bodies are impermanent, we have no reality. The reality actually <clears throat> lies below us. For sure. Okay, I want to read my version because I feel like Please. sometimes it's like slightly different. Yep. Um, verse 16. Of what is not, no coming to be occurs. No coming not to be occurs of what is. But the dividing line of both is seen, of these two, by those who see the truth. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so basically yeah. it's like, what uh, of what is not, no coming to be occurs. So like, essentially, if it doesn't exist, it's not going to exist. Yeah. And is that how all things actually exist? Yeah. <laughs> and that whole idea of like, actually everything that you've ever imagined actually exists somewhere in some place and space and time and some vibration and that there is no actual original thought it seems like that's what he's saying here like if it doesn't exist it's not going to and if it does exist it'll never not exist which i mean talk about law of attraction that's Wait, something what? that we've been Where studying like, you know and it's what? like that's the whole idea of there is no idea that the, all ideas belong to the collective consciousness and if it chooses you it's no coincidence that you were given this idea you Right. It's just you have the capacity, the ability to um, see it through. In this timeline. Because In this then timeline. I'll say that. Like, people who are, like, attracting a specific person or a specific thing or event they want happen into their life. And you know what those are. You're scripting. You're doing all the things that they say bring this into your life. It exists somewhere. And that's the mindset. It exists somewhere. Like, Neville Goddard talks about how you can uh, basically rearrange your life and go to the existence where you have that. Yeah. Because you wouldn't know about it were it not to be. So you just get yourself into that vibration where that's that's where you're at. And that's where people like struggle a little bit, right? With this whole idea of like, does everything exist? It seems like it does though. So. It seems like it. Or am I just crazy and I'm like making this up and I have this weird obsession, but like why? That's the whole thing. Why? Yeah. Because it exists somewhere. And to me, that's absolutely what he's saying right here is like, if it doesn't exist, it's not going to. And if it does, it always will. Yes. He continues on to say, realize that which pervades the universe and is indestructible. No power can affect this unchanging, un imperishable reality. The body is mortal, but that which dwells in the body is immortal and immeasurable. Therefore, Arjuna, fight in this battle. Yeah. Right. Yeah, who believes him a slayer and who he, who thinks him slain? Both these understand not. He slays not and is not slain. He is not born, nor does he ever die. Nor having come to be, will he ever more come not to be. Unborn, eternal, everlasting. This ancient one is not slain when the body is slain. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And this isn't, no, no, that's not surprising, like, to hear that, like, like, eternal life or whatever, coming out of this, but... It is more the idea of like everything does exist and it's going to exist and you're not actually going anywhere. And there's a purpose to the battle. Yeah. There's a purpose to the battle. As always. Yeah. Yeah, he continues. This is verse 22. As one abandons worn out clothes and acquires new ones, so when the body is worn out, a new one is acquired by the self who lives within, which is just this. He circles back to the self yeah. that lives inside all of us and... Just side note, if you haven't done a past life regression, oh, wow. yeah. um, here's your encouragement to do so. Because like he says, we come into this life not remembering our past lives, but doing something like a past life regression can really give you insight as to uh, why you are the way you are. And the karma that you carry in this lifetime is directly correlated to the karma that you have accumulated or shed in the past lifetimes. And so it can give you like some really key insight. Um, but just notice, you can... You, you, you notice in the past life regression that it might be a different body that you're seeing, but it is the same core of self in all of these bodies that we have been in. Whether it's human or animal or whatever it was, whatever we've reincarnated as, yeah. the soul is the same. The self at the core of it is exactly the same. I, I literally last night dreamed I was a seven foot tall man. It was super weird. It was super cool. And it was definitely me. And I just remember being like, whoa, I'm ridiculously tall right now. I'm like, 
it was really cool and it was it, and it was me and there was a, a like a facet of me that is that right I I love my language and and 23 and I'm gonna say it. Mm -hmm. it I don't know it's like the flower it's like the poetic it's yep. like poetry I don't know what do I say swords cut him not fire burns him not water wets him not wind dries him not not to be cut is he not to be burnt is he not to be wet nor dried eternal omnipresent fixed immovable everlasting is he unmanifest he unthinkable he unchangeable he's declared to be knowing therefore knowing him thus thou should not mourn him and when he's saying Blame. he he's talking about the self yes the self cannot be pierced by a dagger the self cannot oh, be that. right um the soul the eternal soul basically yeah. he's talking about right you can't be cut you can't be born you can't die you can't be wet you can't be dry like any of that perception that we have down here in our human game where we're all of that <laughs> and knowing this we should not grieve and that is like it comes back to the senses okay so you're cut by a dagger we know it's not yourself being cut by a dagger but your body senses it you know yeah, and so that's yeah. why it's like when your senses overcome you that's when you can forget who you really truly are which is the core of the self it's so true it's that whole idea of like when your um when your emotions are up your intelligence goes down which it uh, that's in here somewhere I, I remember reading that like that you get so caught up in your senses and your experience we've definitely all done that yeah because as much as this is illusion we talk about this being the maya this being the illusion it is real as hell yeah and like whatever <laughs> technology the universe is using to stick us in here we are meant to feel all of it mm -hmm. we're meant to feel it we're meant to experience all of those all of this stuff that makes us actually think we're not eternal this is the trick right yeah. it's like how to bust out is how to get to where Krishna is like yeah you can't die that's really the key. And then when you get to that, it literally changes everything. It changes how you look at the life that you're in. It changes how you look at the world, your existence, your eternal existence, everything, everything. This next one I love because it's like almost he's speaking to the um, to somebody who would feel critical about all of this, about reincarnation and stuff. He says, oh, mighty Arjuna, even if you believe the self to be subject to birth and death, you still should not grieve. Still. Death is inevitable for the living. Birth is inevitable for the dead. Right. Since these are unavoidable, you should not sorrow. Every creature is unmanifested at first and then attains manifestation. When its end has come, it once again becomes unmanifested. What is there to lament in this? It's so Which, true. It's I mean, so true. We're yeah. definitely all going to die. We're definitely all going to pass from this life. We hang on to it as if we are not in a weird way and we live as if we're not going to but like it's and we mourn those who do die and that's this has been i mean that's something that's so like deep in our culture right that it would be hard to overturn that but to me it's like it's a celebration this person literally is graduating from this earth life and look at all that they did in this body and they will come again they will come and maybe so. not okay in here krishna also teaches you how to die so that you don't manifest back here on earth so we'll get yeah. to that eventually so maybe they won't come back, but for a grand majority of us, we got karma that we still have to work through, that we're coming back to earth, or we're coming back to some type of living living plane where we're working this out. For sure. Okay, this is verse 29. The glory of the self is beheld by a few, and a few describe it. A few listen, but many without understanding. The self of all beings living within the body is eternal and cannot be harmed. Therefore, do not grieve. I mean, he's still on this kick of like, this is why you should not grieve. This is why you should not grieve. And that is exactly as we see, that's what Arjuna is doing is he's grieving the death of these people that aren't even dead yet, who haven't even, you know, which yeah. how many of us do that? It's like Seriously. the old person who's, um, we know is dying and people spend their last minutes just grieving their death with them instead of, you know, celebrating their life with them. Yeah. I mean, couldn't that be like, all of our lives we should be celebrating our life yeah like every breath every second we should be super grateful that we get to have this experience and we we spend a lot of time suffering and that's something like buddhism talks about yeah. is like suffering uh attachment being the cause of all suffering because we are destined to lose all of it all of it all of it so when we get super attached to things and it's easy to do especially with people yeah like we can even do it with objects right where like I lost my one mitten and I'm still mad about it and it's been three weeks <laughs> and it's like 
you know, how many of us are stuck in a grief thing that was from something or someone that left our life 20 years ago, whether they died or whether they walked out on us. Like mm -hmm. we, we get stuck in those uh, energetic loops of like grief. And it, it, to me, a lot of it is like lack of self-worth. Um, we don't know ourselves. We don't know that this is temporary and we actually can't lose anyone, especially people we love and especially the ones that we care about. And I, I do feel like when you get attached to somebody, it's because you know what? we we know each other, right. right? Like we've probably done this a few times. Um, we've probably been in a life or two together. And maybe one of the things that I'm trying to learn from you, dear friend that left me is how to lose you yeah, and how to live my life without you. Because maybe in a different life, I was really dependent on you yeah. and I, my soul wants to separate a little bit, but it's hard to see it while you're in it. It's so hard to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, your eternal self while you're down here on earth. So, which is, it's why this analogy is so beautiful too, because yeah. Sometimes it takes hitting that rock bottom. We see Arjuna in this dark night of the soul before he can awaken. And that is what Krishna is doing is just opening him up to this awakening of remember the true self. Remember that yourself is undying and unbirthing. Remember that your true self cannot be pierced by these daggers, cannot be wet by the rain, cannot, you know, all the things. For sure. So now in chapter or verse 31, considering your dharma, which we know is your purpose, you should not vacillate. For a warrior, nothing is higher than a war against evil. The warrior confronted with such a war should be pleased. Arjuna, for it comes as an open gate to heaven. But if you do not participate in this battle against evil, you will, you will incur sin, violating your dharma and your honor. I just want to talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. And just about how... Sometimes your dharma might not feel like it's the easiest path to follow, but that if you don't follow it... What you happens are, if you don't follow your you're dharma? You're creating sin. I you're mean, creating that's, karma? Yeah. By not following your dharma? How does one know what is their dharma? Well, I mean, that takes some some self-exploration, There's right? got to be something in here on I'm that. sure one there is. Think. I'm sure we'll get to that. But, like, that's the question people get stuck on. What's my dharma? Yeah. And I, I do know that part of your dharma is what are you drawn toward? What do you I'm like? to say that, yeah. What are you good at? Um, and maybe um, something that you're good at, you don't quite acknowledge that other people aren't good at. It's easy to you. So you don't, you don't even think of it as your, as a gift. Please see your episode on remember your gifts, right? Yeah. It's like, we don't call it our gift. And so we don't value ourselves. We don't value it in the same way. And I think it's so important that he's really calling this out as Krishna's Dharma, where Krishna might not really realize that as well. That this is your dharma as a warrior that you should yeah, be happy okay. about right. this and he I mean, says that he's like later he's like what else could be better for a warrior than to die in battle yeah that's literally what you're doing what you're supposed to be doing is like going to battle and isn't that us us souls are ourselves we come down here like well, what do we want do would we want to live forever even in the sense of like uh, on this earthly body for me no like Let's have a few different experiences, please. Yeah. I, I can only learn so much as, as this person, as Shannon. I can only learn so much. So, therefore, I shouldn't be afraid to let go of this body. I shouldn't be afraid to let go of um, my attachment to any of the people around me and their, their bodies, too. Because I, I have other experiences going with them elsewhere, in some other dimension, some other timeline. Like, And I think it's important what you said earlier about... Just even in this life, how you can have a death to the self to be reborn again here and now. You know, I think that's very important, especially when we talk about in our other episodes, this seven year download that we get that we're conditioned to think a certain way, behave, behave a certain way. And then sometimes you will experience an awakening and realize that what you were taught isn't actually reality. And so it's right. like you have to put that self to, to die, allow it allow it to die so that you can be reborn again and so even when he talks about like stepping into another body i think that you can do those same things here in the same body as well for sure can we do we even allow ourselves to step into a different <laughs> body in human life yeah uh, i even think about um i've talked about this before in high school somebody trying to change their look trying to change yeah. their like who they are how they dress or, or whatever people people like crush them it's like they 
no, we see you as this. Don't, who are you to dare step out of yourself and become somebody different? Yeah. But we're all meant to be. We're all meant to be. And you definitely know this as you age, right? So you get to be a certain age and you see you see yourself from 20, 30 years ago. And you're like, yeah. Uh -huh. Like you cringe almost slightly. Like, like who you were in some ways, right? In other ways, it's like amazing. But other ways, it's like, I am totally a different person. Yeah. We literally just got a picture before yeah. this started, a picture of me and my grandson, which was how oh, maybe like four or five yeah. years ago, I literally look like a different person. Well, yeah. he is too, because he's a baby. Yeah. Yeah. We both are like, this is, like, I've already stepped into a different body. And and he too. Him too. And him, him too. too. Him too. So He's, uh, he's been so in many bodies, as we know. <laughs> yes. Our, well, my nephew, her grandson, he is just a knower, a seer, and I he can't wait for things. him to be... Um, old enough to come on this podcast seriously he, he remembers <laughs> things he remembers his lives or whatever it's benny amazing. benny shout out to you What's up, benny? i love you okay krishna brings the heat in the next um yeah. paragraph here starting at verse 34 so remember he's saying um but if you do not participate in this battle against evil you will incur sin violating your dharma and your honor the story of your dishonor will be repeated endlessly and for a man of honor, dishonor is worse than death. These brave warriors will think you have withdrawn from battle out of fear, and those who formerly esteemed you will treat you with disrespect. Your enemies will ridicule your strength and say things that should not be said. What could be more painful than this? I you know, I've thought a lot about this because there's a part of myself that goes, who like who cares? Yeah. I'll like who cares? That's my game character that I just let go of, and I'm just about to get a new one. So who cares what they say? On the other hand, I do think it goes to the whole Dharma karma situation that we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I show up, I am in this body and I'm supposed to do a certain thing, but at the last second I decide, nope, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Can't do it too hard. I don't want to. I've decided not to do it. Okay, fine. It actually doesn't matter in some ways, but like I'm starting over now. Yeah. Wait, like I'm actually setting myself back quite a bit yeah because now i've left a bunch of karma in my path where everyone is basically saying well how i'm a coward and i lost it and i didn't do my duty and so like damn now i gotta clean that up yeah. <laughs> so it's like i so yes on the one hand i can see that um like that whole idea of why do i care what they say about me yeah but it's not that I care what they say about me. And I want to also remind us that this is an allegory. Yep. It is the energy I leave behind he's talking about here. What did I leave behind? What legacy did I leave behind? What lessons did I leave behind for the people that come behind me? Because we know we are our ancestors. So if I know my ancestor died this glorious death in battle, fighting for good, fighting for my family, that is very different than picking up the karma of my ancestor that ran off. Yeah. And who didn't. decided he was going to be a beggar because he didn't want to kill. Yep. You know, and he was going to go beg. And basically, because of that, the other family overran my family. And I have a whole different life now. A whole different karma uh, that I'm now living because of what my ancestor cho chose. So, to me, also, yeah, it matters. Like, it does matter what you do here in life. It does matter. Despite all the stuff that Krishna just told us about how we were immortal and we're going to get a different body on and on. But yet, we're here to do this thing now. So yeah, it absolutely matters what you do if you follow your dharma. If you don't, you're just going to get back on that wheel even longer, even more. <laughs> yeah. Even more. It's the same way in life. Are we going to learn the lesson? Or are we not going to? We're just going to keep repeating over and over and over and over. Okay, if that's what you're going to do, okay. But <laughs> yeah. like, at the same time... I know what I'm trying to do is enlighten this stuff. Yeah. I don't want to get level I up this self. I don't want to be on that same like conflict wheel. I don't want to have the same argument over and over. I don't want to have the same relationship over and over where I have to be hurt or rejected. I don't want to have that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to require that anymore, actually. And this tough love coming from Ugh. Krishna, it just from it, it just like gives me this image of like somebody, um, like uh, let's say a football player, like rubbing themselves up to go out there, like yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to lose? You are you going to lose? Are you going to be a coward? Right. Or are you going to go win? Because if you don't win, this is what everybody's going to say about you. You know, and it just reminds me it's of like... It's like the scene of the battle commander on the horse. Just like going back and forth in front of the army. Like getting everybody all ready. Yeah. We're ready. We're going to go die. And everybody's like, let's go die. Yeah. Let's do it. Yep, yeah. Exactly. So, Krishna continues. 
uh, verse 37. Death means the attainment of heaven. Victory means the enjoyment of the earth. Therefore, rise up, Arjuna, resolve to fight. Having made yourself alike in, in pain and pleasure, profit and loss, victory and defeat, engage in this great battle and you'll be freed from sin. And so he's saying, you win, you lose, you still win. Yeah, because you tried. Because, because you, you tried. It, because you did it. And that, it does go to that someone in life too. Like, let's say you don't, um, you don't get the thing that you're trying to manifest. Maybe that's not your actual dharma. Maybe your dharma was to try and fail. Maybe your dharma was a different way. And, and it's all part of it. Mm -hmm. So um, it, in some ways, in gain and loss, in victory and defeat, gird thyself for battle. And that's it. Like do, the, like, do the thing. Do life, people. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, do life. Like, here we are. And it is a battle, and it is brutal as hell sometimes. But the whole point is to get up and go forward and just know that some things are definitely temporary. Some situations are temporary. This life, these situations, this battle... Is temporary. This is one battle Arjuna is in, and I'm guessing this is not the only story we have with Arjuna. Yeah, no. Right. So, like, we have these different scenes, these battle scenes that come to us, that put us to our knees at times, put us in our dark night, put us into the questioning our purpose, our dharma, our what are we doing here? What is this life? And it is meant to make us know that we're eternal. It is meant to push us into a soul expansion so that you can see that there is more to this so that you do can so that you can keep going right yeah so you are able to just keep going keep going keep going and it's like um you can just think about in your life um a time when maybe you had a teacher a mentor whoever give you some tough love and in the moment it's like screw this person i can't believe they just said that to me but then later you're like they were absolutely right. I feel like that's just like who Krishna is being right now. For sure. And in this next paragraph is one of my favorite lines from the entire Gita. What time are we at? How how much longer are we going? Um, yeah, because I don't think we're going to make it through the whole I don't know that we'll chapter. make it through Maybe, whole Yeah, let's go to half. Um, I'm saying this next one, this next line might be a good place to... To stop? To stop and we can pick up. Yeah, because it goes into the, that whole speech. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So um, Krishna continues verse 39. You have heard the intellectual explanation of Sankhya, Arjuna. Now listen to the principles of yoga. By practicing these, you can break through the bonds of karma. This is one of my favorite lines. It tells us what to do. Yes, verse 40. On this path, effort never goes to waste and there is no failure. Even a little effort towards spiritual awareness will protect you from the greatest fear. So following this, we're going to hear about the path um the principles of yoga that's what yeah. that krishna will continue in the rest of chapter two but i think this is a good place to stop because uh just think about everything that we just said you know let that sink in there's no wasted energy there's no that's wasted what I energy. Heard just now there's no wasted energy as far as you've gotten you've gotten that far and i've heard that before as far as like like how far how enlightened you get you're not going backwards yeah. okay so like Although there's no time and all of our lives are proceeding, uh, whatever, we're calling it past, but everything is literally like simultaneous. Yeah. Um, once you've learned a lesson, you're not going to have to be born again to do that lesson again. You've got that one. Yeah. And I feel like that's why some people, well, that is why we all have different challenges and different things that we're working on. Because yeah. maybe in this life, making money is something I got to worry about, but in a whole different life, I already, already got over that. So my challenge isn't money, it's self-worth. Um, maybe my challenge over here is to learn to be compassionate. Maybe that's the, the thing that I'm trying to get. So I got to have certain experiences in front of me to get to it. And uh, all of it, every bit of it that I'm doing, not one one moment of my effort is wasted and i love that too i love that i just on the yoga path like on the path of like balancing my soul of getting to the place where i don't have to come back here and get a body anymore every moment i make uh, a decision that gets me farther i never have to go back to it there is no like two step forward one step back when it comes to soul expansion you're not going backwards now you can definitely make your mind go back to where maybe you once thought but actually you're not you don't need to you don't have to and you're not actually going to go backwards once you've understood something you can't unknow it honestly i just want to read that verse one more time do it again read it again just to end this on 
uh, just take this with you, okay? Mm -hmm. On this path, this path of enlightenment, this path of, path of life, this path of insert whatever you want to call it, effort never goes to waste and there is no failure. Even a little effort towards spiritual awareness will protect you from the greatest fear. I love it. There you go. So um, thank you so much for staying with us, for being with us. We would love to hear your comments about the Gita. Please put some uh, feedback for us. Uh, you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Find us on YouTube. I want to give a shout out to my dear friend Taylor for she sent me some beautiful reactions to our first video. So thank you for being here, Taylor. If you're listening to this, I love you. I love you. And just dear listeners, I love you. Thank you for being here with us. And like Shannon said, we would love to hear your commentary, your thoughts on this. And um, I'm excited to continue the study. Yeah, please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, hit that notification button and we will see you next time.